management board of the Croatian oil and gas company Ina are meeting today. Apparently they won't be making a decision about the closure of the CSAC oil refinery as had been expected, but rather they will discuss the company's business strategy in future, which of course includes the two refineries. Last week, Ina's supervisory board called for the management to finalize that strategy. To do so, an agreement should be reached between the company's major shareholders, the Croatian government and the Hungarian oil group MOL. According to an opinion poll conducted this month, the Croatian Democratic Union has increased its lead over the Social Democratic Party. If an election were to be held today, around 26% of the Croatian electorate would vote for the centre-right party, while only 20% would vote for the centre-left, SDP. The biggest rise in popularity is being experienced by the new green-orientated Orach party. This data also reflects the fact that not one political party could carry enough votes to win an election outright. President Ivo Josipovic remains Croatia's most popular politician and Prime Minister Zoro Milanovic the least popular. Croatian Health Minister Sinisha Varga on Croatian radio this morning spoke about a recent media claim made against him. He said he hadn't been the person responsible for drawing up a bill of 1.2 million kuna for renovating the Croatian Health Insurance Fund's main conference room. He added that he'd been very concerned about the expense at the time and had raised the question whether the professional architects contracted were acting responsibly. The number of signatures collected in favour of a referendum on preferential voting is rising. The organisers of the petition drive are now saying they have 374,000, which they argue meets the legal requirement of 10% of the Croatian electorate, and so the referendum should go ahead. However, Croatia's administration minister, Arsen Bauk, has said that 450,000 signatures are needed, as Croatian citizens living abroad must also be counted, an opinion shared by the head of the Parliamentary Committee on Justice, Josip Kregar. 23 years ago today, the Yugoslav planes bombed the seat of government in Zagreb, firing six missiles at the headquarters of Croatia's first president, Franjo Tuđman. As a result, the Croatian Sabor unanimously decided the following day to sever all ties with the former Yugoslavia, and ever since, Croatia has marked its Independence Day on the 8th of October. In cultural news, the Macedonian Philharmonic Orchestra performed last night in Zagreb's Vatroslav Lezinski Concert Hall with acclaimed cellist Daniel Mulashot as the soloist and conducted by Borian Kanev. It was their first performance in Croatia for 15 years and it opened the new World of Music concert cycle. Sport and Croatia's national football squad has begun its preparations for two important qualifiers for the 2016 European Championships in France. On Friday they play Bulgaria away from home and three days later they take on Azerbaijan in Osijek. Coach Niko Kovac has called a number of new players to the squad which held its first training session in Zagreb's Maximir Stadium yesterday. This afternoon's forecast calls for partly sunny weather in most inland regions. On the coast and in the Dalmatian interior, it'll be cloudy with some occasional light rain. Winds inland will be light to moderate southerly and southwesterly, while in eastern Slavonia there'll be a southeasterly wind. There'll be a light to moderate southeasterly Yugo wind on the northern coast and on the open Adriatic Sea. Highest daily temperatures will be between 17 and 21 degrees Celsius inland, between 21 and 24 degrees on the coast. The next few days will be mostly sunny and warmer than average for this time of year. Tomorrow there'll be some early morning fog in places, especially in Slavonia. The situation on the coast will be similar. Tomorrow there could still be a little rain in the wider Rijeka region, although generally sunny and warm weather is expected. <laughs>